I'm Peter Block, and I'm at ACC 20-World Congress of Cardiology as well, but this is virtual. Uh, I'm here today with Nadia Roshenscher and Mark Samama, who have done the PRONOMOS trial, an interesting trial for lower extremity surgery. Uh, and the question that was raised with this trial is whether or not an oxaparin is or is not better than rivaroxaban, or perhaps rivaroxaban is not inferior to an oxaparin, and, and also whether it might even be superior. So without further ado, let me go to Nadia and Mark. Uh, Mark, would you tell me, uh, first off, why you did this trial and then exactly how the trial was put together? We, we aim to perform this trial because in Europe, most of uh, immobilized patients were treated with subcutaneous injection of lomacoid heparins. And as soon as the directoral anticoagulants uh, were approved on the market, we thought that it could be interesting to compare rivaroxaban 10 mg uh, once daily with enoxaparin 40 mg once daily sub-Q, uh, which is the standard uh, regimen uh, in such patients. Okay. So um, what were your endpoints? The endpoint was the primary objective, if you prefer, was a composite of major VTE. Major VTE means symptomatic VTE, PE, death related to VTE, and asymptomatic proximal VTE. That is in accordance with EMEA definition. Okay, great. So it's a combined endpoint. Um, so let's move to uh, the outcomes. And I will ask you directly, first off, were you surprised with the outcomes? And secondly, how good were they? Yeah, to, to, make, to make a long story short, we were really impressed and even surprised by the uh, uh, amplitude of the effect. Uh, personally, I thought that uh, Rivaxamon would be as effective as Lomerica wet brain with maybe an increased bleeding risk. And this was exactly the opposite we got. And the decrease in venous thromboembolism, which is the primary endpoint, as already explained by Nadia, reaches uh, 75%, which is very important. But when we, we have done the study, the protocol, we thought that uh, there is a superiority of 30% because the uh, uh, risk ratio we we found we determined was one point thirty. Both of these drugs are anticoagulants. Rivaroxaban, of course, a novel anticoagulant, and anoxaparin, uh, the standard. Both of these can cause bleeding. Were there bleeding differences between the two, and how important was the bleeding? Yes. Uh, we, we, we were afraid about uh, the risk of bleeding, of course, but because uh, we don't want to get more bleeding than events, of course. And uh, it is a young population, as you notice. It is 40 years median. And we show that there is no difference between rivaroxaban and enoxaparin in this young population. And thus, the result is a net clinical benefit. It's very important because we reduce the risk uh, by 60%. So the net clinical benefit shows essentially that uh, rivaroxaban is superior as well. Is that correct? Am I correct in interpreting that data? Yes, it is quite correct. You see at the end exactly the number of events in both groups and you see the reduction, and the risk ratio uh, was uh, 0 0.48. Very good. So I'm going to put up your conclusion slide, and I'm going to ask you about this conclusion because you say, say in the conclusion that it not that rivaroxaban could be used uh, instead of anoxaparin. Uh, would you think that sh that should be stronger? Yes, I think it is stronger because. The lower limb fracture occurs in young population. And uh, in this case, a tablet is uh, much, much better than uh, an injection. And uh, maybe it is cost-effective also. 
I would totally agree with you. I'd much rather take a tablet than uh, take an injection with an oxaparin. So I appreciate both of you coming with and uh, helping out with this information, getting out to everybody. I should point out that uh, both Mark and Nadia are anesthesiologists. So we're delighted to have uh, welcoming to you uh, anesthesiologists into these uh, podcasts or call them what you will. And thank you so much for being here. <music>